I hear you asked a stupid question at that uh, Andre the Chase speech. Is that right? I asked a stupid question. Yeah, man, yeah. did he? Did what he? Was, man, that was was that was like uh, I don't know. <laughs> he said, "Dave, what's your question?" And you asked him, "Well, how are you going to beat this guy? You've never beaten him before." And he he wanted to know if you'd ever been in the ring. Oh man, <laughs> it's a five star love... question. No, no, that's like who'd you who'd you ever beat? I, which which like you know that's like an old nineteen eighties wrestling saying. I got to tell you when I when I you know when I heard that you know who'd you ever beat? It just reminded me I because I, I've heard this a million times, but this is the best version of all of them. Okay, um, so so this is like um, whenever it is Bam Bam Bigelow before he had started wrestling, he was buddies with Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman would would write all about him. And his Paul Heyman used to, I mean, people don't even know this probably, but Paul Heyman used to be like the editor of wrestling magazines, um, and and he would like you know whatever. So so one of his projects was Bam Bam Bigelow. He in the magazines, you know, he just the nuclear splash and blah blah blah. He loved the guy's look. He'd have pictures of the guy with the tattoos and everything like that, and put them all over the magazines. And the guy had never even had a match yet. Um, cause they were buddies. And then, um, he finally, I think it was a uh, studio 54. I think Paul was working publicity there or something like that. He was a big nightclub publicity guy. This is again, before he, he was around wrestling. He was a wrestling journalist, photographer, um, want, you know, wanting to be manager, um, before he became, um, you know, a mastermind or anything like that, but he's always very good with publicity. So anyway, so, so he got this publicity of Bam Bam Bigelow in his pro wrestling debut at Studio 54, and he squashed somebody. And this guy, okay, so he's, you know, 360 pounds or whatever he is, and he's out there doing drop kicks and splash off the top ropes, which big guys in those days, you know, we didn't have freaking um, Jonah's and people like that in that era. I mean, the big guys were, were not very mobile. And to have a guy that size to do what he was doing, like the standing drop kicks, it's like, oh, my God, who is this guy? You know what I mean? It's like the first time I saw the guy, it's like, who is this guy? This is before he went to Memphis with Lawler and Lawler put him over, right? Um, and so Joel Watts, whose name has come up a couple of times lately, Joel Watts must have seen this also because we were talking about this. And he went to his dad and said, you know, I saw this guy, he's 360 pounds, he's got whatever. And then Bill goes, who do you ever beat? And it's like, we're just like, wrestling's fake. It's like, who do you ever beat? So that's the, the who do you ever beat story. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.